Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, we'll be implementing this two-tier architecture in AWS using Terraform. It will have uh, web servers on EC2 with application deployed as a Flask application. And we also have a managed database service, which is RDS uh, running MySQL 8.0. We'll be creating multiple security groups, internet gateway, VPC, subnets, and also secret manager which actually creates the rds credentials and also inject that credentials inside the application to access the database so this is how we are establishing the connectivity between web server and private subnet through a secure service called secret manager we'll be implementing security groups to protect our mysql servers and to protect our web servers right I believe this name is incorrect over here. I'll I'll make the changes, but this is what we are doing. So uh, the users will send the HTTP request through Internet Gateway over port 80. And on this web server EC2, which is hosted on a public subnet, it will have a Ubuntu Flask application running. And then it has a web security group, which allowed this access on port 80. And then MySQL database is hosted inside a managed database service RDS inside a private subnet. And then this also has a security group attached this subnet, uh, which allowed the inbound access on port 3306, which is the MySQL port only from the web tier security group only from this server okay so the public access is blocked and it is also in a private subnet and then database credentials will be accessed and managed through aws secret manager okay and also we'll be doing everything using custom modules custom modules if you are not aware of it i would highly recommend watching day 20 video in which i have implemented a real-time project using custom modules and i've explained everything about custom modules so make sure you watch that before this video okay so if you are new here hello my name is Piyush and um, this is a series 30 days of AWS Terraform that we have been doing it's one of a kind it is having like as you can see around seven real-time projects and 10 mini projects so this is one of those mini projects so just consider if mini project is this complex just imagine the complexity of the real-time project and this is also a challenge, uh, the 30 days of learning challenge that we are hosting. It will have prizes at the end. And we have also given the prizes for first 50 winners as well. $20 AWS credits to 50 winners, which is $1,000 of credit sponsored by AWS Community Builder Program. Yeah, that's that's all about the introduction. If you are new here, uh, make sure you subscribe the channel. Make sure you watch the series in the same sequence and make sure you share it with your friends and colleagues. It's very important. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's uh, start the demo. So I'll first walk you through uh, the code and then we can just start provisioning the resources. Okay, so here we have day 22 folder. Make sure you pull the latest changes from the GitHub repository and it has multiple modules. So all the logical separation that we have done through modules. Okay, and it starts from the root modules main.tf, which is over here. Okay. So we have the Terraform provider. Uh, ideally, I should have a separate file for provider. But anyways, for now, I have just kept it over here uh, inside this. So we are using Terraform provider 5.0. And then we are using AWS region defined in the variable. Then we start with the secret module. Okay, secret module. Here we are passing project name, environment, and DB username. Okay, no credential, just the username we are providing. And then it is using the secret modules, which is over here. Inside secret module, it will go, it will check the main.tf. It will have multiple resources. First is random password. So we need to generate database password once we start provisioning the resources. We don't have to hard code it, right? So what we are saying, we are saying the length is 16 with special character and override special equal to this. So you can use these special characters inside the password. We are just defining that rules for the random password resource. Now we are also generating a random ID, which with the byte length of four. Now here is the resource for AWS secret manager. First, we are creating a DB password. Okay. We are giving it a name with project name, hyphen environment name, hyphen DB password and hyphen the random ID that we have created. So we are giving a long name for that. Now here's the description as well and then some tags. Okay. So this is just a DB password with name, description, tags. Yeah. So this is just a DB password secret resource. 
Now over here, we are providing a AWS secret manager secret version. Okay. So we are providing the secret ID. What's the secret ID, which is this one, the one that we've created, which is DB password dot ID. And then we are providing the secret string. Okay. Secret string, like how the password will be generated. So the secret string is first the username, DB username that we have passed from the root module. Then the password, which is a random password generated uh, using this resource over here, random password dot DB password dot result. And we are passing engine as MySQL and host and this. So this will be created as a JSON file and stored inside this resource. Okay. So this is a JSON file that we are creating with username, password, engine, and host. Okay, that's the secret module. Let's go back over here. Now we are creating a VPC module. VPC module, we have seen that in day 20 video. Uh, so this is similar to that. We are just passing some values. And over here, we are creating the resources. So AWS VPC, subnet, and then the private subnet for RDS. And we are also creating subnets, uh, sorry, subnet private subnet 2 you're creating additional private subnet so that i believe we are doing that for yeah because your rds is a managed database service right so it will be provisioned into multiple subnets multiple availability zones right so we are doing that separation so that it is highly available even if one subnet goes down the rds is there in other subnet as well right then internet gateway public route table, route table association, and that's it. But make sure you also create the NAT gateways as well and the route association for NAT gateway. It is really important. Okay, and let's go back over here. So this is done, this is done. Okay, then security groups. Again, security group, there is a separate module for security group over here. Inside that, uh, we are creating the inbound rule for port 80 from anywhere and also SSH from anywhere, make sure you use that for your IP only, okay? And then egress anywhere. Then database security group, we are allowing ingress on port 3306 only from the web security group. And egress to all outbound access, but this has to be also updated through the NAT gateway. Make sure you do that. Okay, let's go back. And then uh, this is the RDS module for the database. So we are providing project name, environment, and then we are getting private subnet ID from VPC module. So when the VPC module is provisioned, right, uh, that VPC module also has subnet. So once the subnets are provisioned, we will have the subnet ID, right? And those subnet ID will be there inside. If you go to do, 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 over here, output variables, so it will have public subnet ID and private subnet ID. So these are once the subnets are created. So that is how they are getting the values, right? So those values we are using over here, right? So if you have watched date 20 video, uh, yeah. So it's, let me just go back and show you that as well. Day 20 video over here. So, uh, yeah, so the way uh, the root modules get the value uh, from the custom module, right? Um, we get the value inside the main.tf of root module from the output variables of the custom module, okay? And this is what we are doing over here as well, okay? Then we have db username and db password, uh, sorry, that's db name and db username and db password we are again getting from the secret module. Okay, module secret db password and from there we are getting the db password and other details are coming from the variables. Okay, then EC2 modules. Similarly, we are getting VPC related details and RDS related details from the custom modules. Okay, so when the VPC is created, we are getting public subnet ID. When security groups are created, we are getting the web security group ID. And when the DB is created, we are getting the db endpoint details so from all the child modules we are getting the values and then again db password we are also getting from the secret manager module okay so these are all the resources that we are provisioning and in the same sequence so this is let me go back okay 
so we are creating all of these resources but make sure uh, over here you add NAT gateway make sure you route the mysql outbound access through NAT gateway we have done this multiple times so you can watch either uh, one of the previous videos or you can refer to the repository or just do your own research and try to do that it's it's pretty straightforward it is a must have for any database server outbound connectivity okay now uh, let's go back over here and make sure you pull the latest changes from the repository let's go to day 22 okay let me set the alias and let's run terraform in it okay so once the resources are provisioned we'll also test the application if it is working fine or not so tf plan okay and then 16 resources to add and tf apply hyphen hyphen auto approve okay let me check if it is throwing error if not i will just pause the recording it is provisioning secret database password i believe creation complete and it is still creating vpc subnet yeah it is doing its work so let me just pause the recording because database creation will take some time maybe 10 15 minutes so let me pause the recording yeah it's starting the database creation now okay so the resources have been provisioned let's go and check out uh, the application so here are all the details like rds endpoint um, and web server public dns which is the application url application url over here as well make sure you also understand how do we deploy the application you might be wondering already how and when did we deploy the application actually it's part of ec2 metadata so if you go inside modules ec2 and then there'll be a templates folder inside that there is user data so here is our application code it's a simple flask application uh, so we install the dependencies and everything and then we created the flask application which is using the database as well right and in the main.tf of our ec2 module we have passed that user data script as the template file along with the db credentials right so let's go and check out the application uh, let's take this public dns and let's hit it okay it says uh, terraform rds demo and it is connecting to the rds and now let's try to save a message hello Piyush. Hit enter the message is saved in the database right and it is like you can get the mess you can see the message in the database you can just log into the database and you can check the message actually is there or not right and like it the application has some other endpoints so first is the slash is the home page and then we have health as well so if you go to this slash health so you will see the database connectivity details right uh, the flask application is successful and this is green as well and the next one is db info so if you go to db slash hyphen info you will see the database information like the name host mysql version and so on so it's a simple 2 tier application with a front end and the database uh, that stores the messages it does not provide a lot of delete or edit operations it's just the insert and read operation so uh, just just for this demo we have deployed this application uh, and yeah i mean make sure you destroy the infra after you are done right because rds will cost you a lot if you don't do that and yeah it will be destroyed shortly and maybe it's time that we conclude the video make sure you do the hands-on uh, and make sure you understand everything in detail only then you will be able to understand all the fundamentals of terraform okay so that's it from this video thank you so much for watching i will see you tomorrow with the next video have a good day happy learning